Good afternoon. It's Friday at noon Central Standard Time and we are here for Focus on It Friday. I am so glad to be with you all and we have a juicy topic that we're going to be discussing today. So come on in, come on in, bring a friend and come on in. We are going to be talking about is it ADHD or is it bipolar disorder? Oh my goodness, how will we be able to know? Of course, you know I'm going to tell you over here at Focus on It Friday. So come on in to all of your friends to come, those who think that their children have either ADHD or have bipolar disorder or they just don't know what's going on, tell them to come on over here to Dr. Brandy B. We have Miss Isabella Combs with us today and we thank you for joining. Welcome to Focus on It Friday. Anybody else joining us today? I, it looks like my screen is going to show up. Oh, there we go. We've got Dr. Nicole Cole watching us, not from Savannah, but from Columbus, Georgia. We thank you for watching Dr. Nicole. We thank you for watching us and for saving the tatas over in the Columbus, Georgia area. Y'all, she is a radiologist. I brag on her. That's my sister, y'all. Um, from another mother, of course, but that is my sister, Dr. Nicole, and she is a radiologist, but her specialty or special area is breast imaging, and we appreciate her for doing all the work that she does. Come on in, tag all of your moms and dads and grandmothers that you know need to be here to learn about ADHD and how it may differ from bipolar disorder, because you know you have thought this child has bipolar, or maybe my adult child, or my husband, or my wife, or my co-workers have bipolar disorder. Come on in and let's find out all about it. Hello, my sorority sister, Miss Irma. I have been missing you on the lives. So glad to see you today. You have been missed. Thank you for watching Dr. Brandy B's Focus on It Friday. It's always a pleasure to have you and all the other guests joining with us today. We're going to wait about one more minute and then we're going to go ahead and get started. So glad, excited I was able to be here with you all today in my area in my space not in the car so we can really get down to business hello auntie julia thank you for watching today guys we're going to be talking about is it adhd or is it bipolar disorder go ahead and tell me something if you can hear me just say hello hello that way i know that i am not talking to myself and that you can actually hear me. Hello, Miss Caitlin Jackson. Thank you for joining us today. We're going to have a good time today, guys. And I'm going to promise and try very hard not to keep y'all like I did last week. Oh, my goodness. We stayed in here an hour, but that always means we're having a good time. We're having a good time. So just tell me I can hear you, Dr. Brandy B, or something so that I know you can hear the words that are coming out of my mouth. I see y'all watching. Somebody just pressed the love, which I guess means either they think I'm cute or they can actually hear me. But if you would just let me know, one person let me know, then we can go ahead and get started. All right, just one person tell me that you can hear me. I hope I can see... Um, I can see who's watching, but I see no comments. All right. Any comments? Yes, 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 yes. All right. There we go. Auntie Julia. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Y'all can hear me. Hello, Melanie. Thank you for joining. Miss Caitlin says hello. Dia says hello and good afternoon. Yes, yes, yes. You are teaching the children and media and we thank you for teaching the children. That 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 is such an important job and we thank you for doing that. Miss YouTube, but went back and listened to the recordings. I see when you listen, and I sure do appreciate you, Sora Irma. I appreciate you listening. I can hear you, says Melanie. We can hear you, says Dia. I can hear you, says Miss Sheila. Thank you for joining. Auntie Julia says, I can hear you. And Sora Irma says, I can hear you. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Miss Sheila McDonald Pruitt, thank you for joining. Hello, Mama. She says, hello, she can hear me. And I appreciate you, too, for joining. Let's get busy. I am Dr. Brandy B., your triple board certified child and adolescent psychiatrist and through my facebook live streams my upcoming bestseller book y'all are going to help me get to that status my speaking engagements and 
just any encounter with anybody that I can give. I go out of my way to make sure that moms, dads, teachers, uh, other educators, pastors, whomever needs to know, get all the education that they can um, to help the kids in their lives be successful in the classroom and in life. Let's go ahead and jump into it. Today, guys, we are going to talk about a question I always get as what we call in medicine a chief complaint or a chief concern. Why did the patient come? And it is always, I think, this child has bipolar disorder oh my goodness and so very infrequently they may but most times they don't it may not all the time be adhd but i do want you to know that there are a lot of similarities between adhd and bipolar disorder well what are those similarities i'm glad that you asked so that i can share with you some of the similarities between adhd and bipolar disorder can be talkativeness fidgetiness um, I don't even know if that's a word, but fidgety, uh, being fidgety, um, always being on the go, being hyperactive, being impulsive, and sometimes even being irritable. These are things that we can see in both disorders, in both ADHD and in bipolar disorder. So how in the world does one tell the difference? I'm also glad you asked me that question. Hi, Cousin Latina, Mr. Patrick Hegler. Thank you for joining. Thanks to both of you all for joining. We are talking about how ADHD and um, bipolar disorder are different, how you can tell the difference. Hello, Miss Stephanie Heich. Thank you for joining. Miss Keen, I was just wondering where you were, and I, I forgot about you yesterday. I worked late on Thursdays, but I'm going to respond to you as soon as I get off the live. You say, I am looking awesome as usual. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Last night was a rough night, y'all. I had a lot of stuff going on with some of my patients. Thursdays are just long nights anyway. So it's always exciting to be able to come to you all and just kind of let go of the week. But yeah, y'all pray for your for your mental health workers because sometimes we're not okay. Um, and most of the times I'm all right. I love doing what I do. But every once in a while, you just either encounter um, a parent who is frustrated um, or just a really sad case. So just just lift up those families and lift up the, the doctors and therapists and counselors that are working with them. And don't forget your nurses, guys. Nurses are awesome. I've got some amazing ones. I'm not going to call any names, but they know who they are. They're watching. Hello, Miss Janice. Thank you for joining. We are talking about ADHD and bipolar disorder. We just talked about how it is, how they're very similar. Some of the hyperactivity, impulsive stuff, the talkativeness, the fidgety behaviors, all that stuff. But what we want to focus on today is how are they different. Now, just for diagnoses, in case you have not been hanging out with me and you do not know what ADHD is. Hello, Miss, um, who is that? Miss Ryan, thank you. Um, and Miss Melanie says, yes, please pray for us. Hashtag therapist. Yes, girl, I am praying because it is hard out here in these mental health streets. Y'all just don't know we are giving y'all everything. And then some of us are still having to go home and deal with life ourselves. So just lift us up as we try to do this good work. Miss Julia Skinner, Skinner Buford, thank you for joining y'all. That's my coach's mother and I appreciate her for hopping on this live with us, talking about ADHD real quick. Y'all know what ADHD is. There are three types. We we drilled this last week. If you missed it and you still think that there is an ADD, please go back and check out last week's live. There is no more ADD. Now it's just all ADHD and there's one of three types. Predominantly hyperactive, inattentive type, predominantly um, inattentive presentational type, and then the combined presentation. So three types of ADHD, all right? Bipolar disorder, um, there are two main types of bipolar 1 and a bipolar 2. We're going to get into a little bit about how they're different as we talk about the differences between ADHD and bipolar disorder. Now, I know some of y'all take notes, so this is the time to go ahead and grab your pen. All right, y'all know I'm going to try to look at my notes so I stay on track. I know all this stuff, but y'all know I'll be, have y'all here till Tuesday. Y'all will sign off, go get lunch, go to the movies and come back and I'll still be talking. So, one of the big things that you want to know about how when I'm listening, what I'm listening for to tell does this child have bipolar or does this child have ADHD is the time and of the presentation of symptoms. ADHD is chronic. It's ongoing. It never stops. Medications or other treatments may slow it down, 
But if you do not give that treatment, whatever it is that you're doing to treat it, uh, ADHD symptoms will go on and 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 come back and go on and on and on and energize a bunny and on and on and on and on and on and on. So somebody just write in the chat for me. ADHD is chronic. Somebody write in the chat for me. ADHD is chronic. Miss Manessa, we see you and we thank you for joining us on this Friday. It is a little bit after 12 Central Standard Time on Friday, the 16th of April, guys. And I thank you all for being here. So ADHD is chronic. ADHD is chronic. The symptoms are chronic. The behaviors are chronic. They are all the time, all the time, all the time, all the time. ADHD is chronic. Thank you, Miss Stephanie. Hi, ADHD is chronic. Bipolar disorder, though, on the other hand, is epilepsy episodic episodic what do i mean by that i'm glad you asked i'm going to tell you somebody put in the chat bipolar is episodic bipolar is episodic somebody write that in the chat for me bipolar is episodic so adhd is chronic on and 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 on bipolar disorder is episodic so you're going about life life is good you're chilling and then boom you get manic you stay manic for at least a week if you want to be called bipolar type 1 or for four days if you're called bipolar 2. Now, if at any point you get hospitalized while manic, you are automatically bipolar 1. So bipolar 1 is going to be a full week or you get hospitalized on day 1 or day 2 or day 3 or day 4 or day 5 or day 6. You're bipolar 1. If you only have symptoms for four days, then you're bipolar 2. Now, what are these symptoms? Oh, my goodness. I'm glad you asked. Let's talk about what these symptoms are. Let's go back. I should have told you this. Definitions. Bipolar is made up of two poles. Bi means two. Polar, meaning an up pole and a down pole. The up can either be irritability Okay, so we call it mania. Up is mania. Down is depression. The up is mania. The down is depression. Somebody write in the chat for me, two poles equals bipolar. Bipolar equals two poles. P-O-L-E. Two poles. Bipolar equals two poles. Up pole, which we call mania. The down pole, which we call depression. All right, when you're up, when you're manic, it's a mood change. You can either be euphoric, which is la, 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 life is great, life is great, la, 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 little smurfs, okay? Not grumpy. I think grumpy was a smurf. Or was that a dwarf? Hmm, I don't know. But anyway, you're happy. You're euphoric. Life is great. Think of euphoria. I think there's a designer that has a fragrance called Euphoria. It's a place where everything is good, right? Okay. You can either be euphoric or you can be irritable. One of those two things. Most people tend to be euphoric, extremely happy. And with that comes several of these next set of symptoms. Your talkative, your uh, thoughts race moving really 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 fast part of that talkativeness means that it's fast and sometimes words just slur because you're talking so fast and you're trying to get your thoughts together and then you're feeling good about yourself you're like look at me darling i'm beautiful okay um and you yearn to do things that are dangerous risk taking type behaviors fast driving um spending money impulsively going in walmart for you know a loaf of bread but not mentioning to your friends and family that you're going to the walmart south of the border okay and not the border of your neighborhood um just driving 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 going on and on not needing sleep so just not being a situation where i can't fall asleep but i don't need sleep 
All right? So you got all of that going on. My thoughts are raising. My, my speech is fast. And sometimes I just learn. And then I'm like, I don't keep. I just keep going. And and I'm, I'm goal directed in my activity. I'm going to get things done. I'm going to get it done right now. I'm going to stay up all night. And I'm going to sweep the walls. And I'm going to paint the floor. And I'm going to go outside and redecorate. And cut the grass at 3 a.m. Because I don't need sleep. Who needs sleep? And when I come in, I may have my lipstick out to here and my eyeshadow over here. And I'm like, look at me, darling. Aren't I beautiful? Now, everybody doesn't present that way. But I want you to understand that mania really is a, um, a for a lot of people, it feels good. You can get a lot done. If you're a high exec and you missing deadlines, you have energy out the wazoo. You take a two-hour nap and you're like, let's go, world. I'm ready, okay? That's mania. If you have those symptoms for four days, we call it bipolar 2. We call it hypomania, H-Y-P-O. If you have those symptoms for seven days, we call it mania. And, or rather, if you go in the hospital at any day, you're called manic. We got that? Now, the difference is that you go up, you stay there for a week, and then eventually you're just going to come down. Some people come back down to their baseline. Some people come down into a depression. Okay? And then they live there until they have their next episode. That's why... Bipolar is episodic. Episodic. We got that? Bipolar is episodic. ADHD, if this is typical, they live here all the time. All the time. Bipolar, if this is typical, they live here and then boom, they go here. They stay there for a week and then they come back down either to here or all the way down to depression. So, Timing is the one difference. I want you to know that. Everybody got that? Timing is different. ADHD is chronic. Energizer Bunny. Bipolar is episodic. A week at a time or less. Okay. Number two, the symptoms. Somebody write number one. So we're talking about how are they different. Number one um, is the timing. Number two, the main symptoms. ADHD is a disorder of behaviors and of focus. Remember, some weeks ago, I think I did it on a Sunday, I talked about how ADHD is a neurobehavioral um, disorder or neurodevelopmental disorder, right? So it's behaviors that cause the problems. What are the behaviors? They are the symptoms that make up the criteria. It's the not being able to stay in the seat, the talkative, the blurting, the interrupting, the, the shouting, the jumping, the all the INGs that they do. It's also the losing things, forgetting things. Adults who have ADHD, missing appointments, missing meetings, miss, missing deadlines. Okay? So, if behaviors and um, behaviors and focus are the problem there, because remember I told you that with Bipolar disorder, they get super focused. I'm going to get a job and I'm going to get a job today. You haven't worked in five years, but you're going to get a job today and you're starting at 3.30 and you're calling places at 3.30 and get mad because no one answers. Okay? Y'all with me? Say, I'm with you. Let me see if you're with me. Let me see if anybody got any questions. Let me go back up here. Let me see. Here we go. Let me see what we got. Bipolar is episodic. Hello, let's see Nicole Johnson Jones. Hello, thank you for joining us. She came to our meeting back in December. We had a ball. We've got Miss Bobby Garcia. Thank you for joining. Colleen Parks, thank you for joining. Miss Julia says that bipolar is episodic. That's right, that's right. Vanessa, uh, Dr. Vanessa LeBlanc is with us and she says two poles equal bipolar. You got that right, Crystal. Uh, Sims Lipscomb, my, one of my mommy friends, she says two poles equals bipolar. That's right. Miss Sheila McDonald Pruitt says two poles is bipolar. Miss Julia says bipolar equal two poles. Look, y'all are all over that. Y'all are all over that. Miss Irma still with me. Auntie Brenda, hello. She is still with me. Sam says, school is out today, and I have the Energizer Bunny. She says she lives with the Energizer Bunny. <laughs> Melanie is with me. Uh, Miss Auntie Sadie Gresham is with me. All right, all right, all right. 
Just wanted to make sure because we are heavy today. Y'all y'all are some pros. I have taught y'all well about ADHD. I said, I'm going to challenge them today. And y'all are hanging in there. Mama says she's hanging. Hello, Miss Leanne Boyd. Thank you for joining us. And welcome to Focus on a Friday with Dr. Brandy B. Okay. So the symptoms. ADHD, behavioral, and focus. Bipolar disorder is a disorder of mood. Remember, I told you you're either manic or you're depressed. It's two poles of moods. Now, we talked about manic mania. You know what it is. You know what it looks like. Depression, you know what that looks like. We've talked about depression. What day did we talk about depression? We talked about it July 17th. If you want to go back, July 17th, 2020, I was wearing um, gray with a red head wrap. Okay? So go back and check that out. But I want you to know, bipolar is a disturbance of mood. ADHD is a disturbance of behaviors and focus. Now, somebody said, but my child has ADHD and they're moody and irritable. We got to talk on that too. Why is my child so irritable? Um, I want y'all, I'm going to give y'all that date. Hold on. Y'all know I be trying to educate y'all. I want y'all to have that date. Why is my child so irritable? Why is my child so moody? That was August 28th. Why is my child so moody? If you have a moody child, go check it out. I don't know what I was wearing on that day. All right. Let me tell you about the, the moody part of ADHD. A lot of times, children with ADHD have oppositional defiant disorder. Oppositional defiant disorder, we talked about it June 26th of last year. Go check it out. And I'll talk about these again. But for the sake of time, I want you to know, these are the kids that are the button pushers. Argumentative, defiant, oppositional Easily annoyed, annoys others. Blame others for their mistakes, okay? These kids are extremely irritable. And ODD and ADHD go hand in hand. But ADHD in and of itself usually does not cause a lot of mood problems. And ADHD is not a mood disorder. We got that? Miss Melanie says, is it common for ADHD children children with ADHD, to have problems with mood regulation. And so that's that's what I was just saying. A lot of times they get frustrated. So if you've ever talk, listened to me, um, Miss Melanie, I don't think you've been hanging out with us a long time, but we talk about, you ought to, y'all ought to go back and check out all of my stuff because I'm telling y'all, I'm giving y'all hardcore stuff. ADHD changes over time. Young kids, hyperactive. Young kids, hyperactive. Middle school kids come to me with this child is moody and irritable and depressed and anxious and then as they get older drug sex and rock and roll so the impulsivity so remember i told you there were three types of adhd hyperactive impulsive type um inattentive type and combined and each of those can change over time now you can have any of them all the time but they do change over the life of a child and so yes problems with mood regulation um can happen they can happen. A lot of it comes from being frustrated with being forgetful, not remembering to do what they were told, not completing a task, rushing and making a careless mistake and writing five for the question of two plus two and said, oh, I knew it. And now they're mad at you because they got a 45 on the test when really they knew all the answers. And so that's a lot of times where the mood can come from if it's just purely ADHD. But a lot of times the mood is coming from the ODD as well. And sometimes disruptive mood dysregulation disorder, which is another thing we have not really talked about a lot. Oh, well, you beat me to it. There we go, girl. See? Psychic. Psychic. All right. Glad I answered your question. Nope. First time here. Oh, Miss Melanie. Y'all tell Miss Melanie welcome. Y'all please give Miss Melanie a warm welcome. Tell her welcome. Miss Melanie says it's her first time over here at Dr. Brandy B. So y'all go ahead, my busy bees, and um and tell her welcome. Y'all make her feel real loved over here at Dr. Brandy B. Can ADHD cause can ADHD meds cause anxiety problems? Um ADHD meds cause anxiety problems. Anxiety problems. Um, a lot of times kids with ADHD will look anxious, and I just spoke briefly about that. Um, the, the medicines can do some strange things. Yes. Some kids will kind of revert, recede and be alone, not want to be bothered. Some kids can look like they're 
too sad, too down, don't want to talk. You know, parents say that their kids look like zombies. So, yeah, your kid may have some symptoms, but that's not anything that we typically will find. Um, if that is the case and something that is happening, you definitely want to get with your psychiatrist or nurse practitioner or whomever, your pediatrician, and let them know that that is the case. All right. Thank you all so much for welcoming Miss Melanie over here. So, girl, now you are, it is no longer your first time, honey, because everybody called you by name. So, welcome. But, girl, yeah, go check out all these. Oh, my goodness. We've got all kinds of good stuff. And, y'all, I'm trying to get it, the, the, the list updated. But just go play with all of them, girl. They are all good, if you ask me. Miss Sheila says, I started watching yesterday. I love them. I plan on watching them all. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Miss Sheila. Mama says, welcome. Carrie says, welcome. Vanessa, everybody says, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So we got it down pat. Number one is time. ADHD is all the time chronic. Bipolar disorder is episodic. We got that. The second thing, symptoms. ADHD, let me, can I get a scribe at the end here to make sure we are, um, we're going to have a good summary at the end. ADHD is, D as far as symptoms, it's going to be behaviors and uh, what did I say? Behaviors and focus. And then uh, bipolar disorder, the primary symptom is going to be mood, changes in mood. Let's see what we got. Dr. Brandy, what was the medicine you mentioned yesterday that could be next after Focalin? Now, girl, we talking about your baby. I don't know. We going to have to, now you going to have to call the office. That's the first rule over here. We can't talk about the babies. The people are because I, I honestly don't remember. It depends. Um, it, usually, I'll go to Concerta after Focalin, but I'm not remembering your name. So, call me Monday at the office wherever your child is seen. I don't know parents' names. So, I'm sorry that I'm not remembering. But usually, I'll go to Concerta after Focalin. But that's not always the case. I mean, there's a whole lot of things that go through my mind while I'm talking and thinking. We came in and met with you yesterday. Uh oh, Miss Carrie. I'm sorry. I saw 19 people after 3 p.m. And so I just, I'm sorry, I just don't remember. I would remember your baby's name, but don't put it. I remember your baby's name, but I don't remember your name. Yeah, but I saw 19 after 3. And I saw, I don't know, 24 before that. I don't know. So. Call me Monday, and we'll find out. All right. I can't remember either other than yes, ma'am. That's it, Concerta. Okay, so good. I do the same thing all the time. So, all right, perfect. All right, number three, predictability. Now, who can tell me if ADHD is consistent? Just right, yes or no? Yes or no? We drilled this last week, y'all. Come on now. All my superstar busy bees. All my superstar busy bees. Come on. Is ADHD consistent? Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on, tell me. Is ADHD consistent? Is ADHD consistent? No. Very good. Very good. Anybody else? Any others? We drilled this last week. Is ADHD consistent? Auntie Julia says yes. No, says mama. Any more? Any more? I saw Miss Vanessa says yes. I saw Miss Cecilia just did a heart. Who else? Any more? Let me get about two more people. No, says Miss Julia Skinner, uh, Skinner Buford. No, says Miss um, Miss Ryan. One more. Yes or no? Is ADHD consistent? Ooh, I'm so excited. So is anybody else? Come on. It depends. I like that answer. That's safe. <laughs> Choice C. When the teacher gives you A and B, go with C. So remember, ADHD is inconsistently inconsistent, which means that no, it's not consistent. There is consistently inconsistent. I like it. And I like to say that it is inconsistently inconsistent, which means that you don't ever know what you're going to get. You're going to get some variation of the same thing, but you never know. You never know. So parents are all the time frustrated because they know their kid's going to have a math test on Friday. And what do they do? They study Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. 
What does the kid do who's inconsistently inconsistent? They're going to know the answers on Monday, on Wednesday, and on Thursday. But on Tuesday, and guess what? Friday, they don't know the answer. And now they got a 32, and you are just devastated because y'all stayed up all night, every night, for the past week. And they failed. And you know that they know it. And the teacher knows that they know it. And guess what, guys? The student knows that they know it. This is why when somebody asks about, can they be irritable? Can they be moody? Yeah. Can you imagine on your job knowing how to do something, but every time the boss rolls around, you're doing it wrong? That's the life of a child with ADHD. Poor kids with ADHD. I feel sorry for them. So I'm going to always advocate for those babies. But I'm not going to push you. If you've ever been a parent of mine, what do I always say at the end of the meeting? What do you want to do? Right? Because nobody will ever say they left Dr. Brandy B's office or Dr. Rudolph Bolin or Dr. Bolin, depending upon where you see me. And I told them what they were going to do. Right? So inconsistently inconsistent. All right? Whereas um, predictability with bipolar disorder. For the most part, you're going to know that if you do not get enough sleep, you could find yourself in a manic episode. If you... Some people say if they don't eat right, if if you get too stressed out, you could definitely find yourself in a manic episode. And nine times out of ten, you're going to do the same thing. Your mania presents the same way each time. Your mania presents the same way each time. I want to go back to just the symptoms and tell y'all something about this. Anytime somebody says to me about their child, their spouse, their whomever, he only does this when you can rule bipolar out. Okay, he only behaves this. He only gets upset when. And then if you give in, it goes away. Then no, because remember, how long does it need to last to be classified as a type one mania? Seven days, a full week. So if he only gets upset when I say no, but then when I say yes, he gets better. Rule out bipolar. The only the other thing I want you to know is he only gets this way when he gets high. When he gets drunk, when he can't get high, it's not bipolar. Now, the caveat to that, I'm going way off script. But y'all know I like to tell y'all, even I get excited. The caveat to that is that sometimes people's impulsivity includes drug use. Ooh, ain't that awful? So if you're bipolar, you may end up using drugs because you're impulsive. Remember that part of the reason that I'm so passionate about ADHD is because a lot of times those kids end up on drugs. Why? Because they're impulsive too. When they are impulsive though, they end up finding themselves using the right drug and initially they can focus. But after a week or two of using the right drug, they are strung out, scratching and itching and no teeth. Now we got a problem. All right, so just keep that in mind. If you can tell them, um, hey, I'll do this if you stop, and they say, okay. You know, and this is a bit extreme, but the, excuse, the example I always give is if someone is manic and their mom dies, they can't get sad enough, and they liked her. Likewise, if they are depressed and they win a lottery, they can't get manic. So it's not situational, all right, which is another way that they're different. They're not situational. ADHD sometimes can be situational. For example, if my child is extremely hyperactive, but I call it the hand to, hand to thigh test. If I sit with them and keep my hand on their thigh, they may not move. But as soon as I turn to get something out of my purse, they're, they're over there in the doctor's office, Okay. So in that situation where I'm like this, I can keep them together. There is no situation where you can control or change the behavior of a person who has bipolar disorder. So situation, let me write that down. All right, so we got time. We've got symptom, main presenting symptom. We have um, situation. We've got predictability. Two more. We've got prognosis. All right. Prognosis means um, what's going to happen in the future. Remember, I always talk about these are rough, loose 
um, numbers, but about 50% of children who have ADHD will outgrow it, which means that 50% won't. One of my colleagues asked me, um, Rudolph, what happens to adults who just stop their medicine? I said, well, some of them will go to college. And remember, if you've been hanging out with me, 5 to 10% of people who go to college with ADHD, that's the number that complete college, 5 to 10%. That number is shocking because that means 90 to 95% of people who go to college and have ADHD don't ever finish college. And remember, ADHD has nothing to do with how smart you are. So whenever people say to me, but he's so smart, Dr. Bolin, I believe you. But that has nothing to do with whether or not he has ADHD. Okay. So, yeah, so you can grow up, you can go off to college, drop out, or you could finish. You could end up on drugs because you were impulsive. You could die in a car crash. You could go and get a job and change jobs because you get fired for little stuff, missing deadlines, not paying attention, just being late. People with ADHD are chronically late because they couldn't find something, something wasn't where it was supposed to be. They just did not plan accordingly. Time is not their friend. Time got away from them, okay? Or they could go on and just live average everyday lives because they figured out how to manage. On the other hand, people with bipolar disorder, it's called, uh, you know, it's a waxing and waning, relapsing, chronic disorder. So whenever people say to me, I think he has bipolar, I'm thinking to myself, I mean, if you have bipolar, okay, we're going to work with it, but that's not anything I would want to wish on my baby. These people tend to have lives where they are always in and out of the hospital or threatening to be or their relationships are torn because people are like we just didn't see that coming we weren't prepared for you to flip out on us like that and stay that way for a week and we didn't know why and you're acting like nothing is wrong we can't be together friends do that relationships jobs okay you walk off a job i don't need this job well the car that you got in you need to pay the note tomorrow. You do need this job. Okay? So that can happen. Y'all with me? Vanessa says mom and son are alike. Is bipolar hereditary? Absolutely, Miss Carrie. ADHD too. 51% of dads with ADHD give it to their kids. 41% of moms. Um, similar data. We know, no, 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 for a fact that the mood disorders... So, number one, we learned last week, anxiety is the most common of all um, mental illnesses. Anxiety is the most common of all mental illnesses. Uh, mood disorders are also common as well in families. So, all this stuff runs in families, if you will. So, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And we don't know if some of that is um, learned as much as genetics. So genetics is, I gave my son and my daughter a certain amount of my genes and they got a certain amount from their father and that is their gene pool. Some stuff is learned though in my environment. If I'm a highly anxious person, I am very likely to have highly anxious kids because I live in a state of worry, fear, and what if. And so my kids are always behind me like, well, what if, okay? We're with you. Wow, that's deep. Wow, wow, wow. With you, talk to your spouse's parents if you can. It may help with the medication choice. Absolutely. Listen, this is just a personal note. This is just Dr. Brandy B giving y'all. Listen, if you are young or old or in between and you're looking for a spouse, you better meet their parents and their family for a whole lot of different reasons. You can learn about their ideas about parenting, their ideas about marriage, their ideas about cheating, their ideas about forgiveness, their ideas about rearing children. Do you spank children? Do you whip children? Do you holler children? And you can figure out what mental illnesses are running in the family, what medical illnesses are running in the family. You want to know that days before saying, I do because after you say, I do, you've married all those folks. They showing up at your house the next day with all of that mental illness coming over to your house. And you didn't know it. And now you and your husband or wife have your first argument. And you're like, where they come from? 
He's witnessed that all his life. So, yeah, that's just an aside. Okay, let's finish it. What time is it? Oh, Lord, it's 1241. Okay, let's get out of here. One last thing. We talked about ADHD, y'all. In case you just come in, I see my cousin, Clarice Street the Third coming in. Thank you so much. We've got cousin Coco Brown. Thank you very much. I added California to my list, girl. So, um, I don't know how long it'll be, but California is coming up on my list. Let's see. So, what are we talking about? We're talking about ADHD and bipolar disorder. Have y'all enjoyed this so far? Just let me know if you enjoyed it. Because y'all know, now I have a new respect for the pastor when he say, say amen. Because you do want to know, especially in this world, I can't see y'all. So, unless y'all talk back to me, we got 23 people on the call. So, unless y'all talk back to me, I don't know if y'all over there sleeping or you, you know, you can move the video down and still be surfing on Facebook, I just want to make sure that that is not what y'all are doing, but y'all are still here, so I guess we're doing okay. All right. ADHD, bipolar disorder, we talked about how they are alike. Hello, hello, my sis Erica. Miss Carrie says, yes, ma'am, this was great. We'll definitely have to watch you again. I appreciate that. Oh, my goodness, my BFF Kina is in the building. Thank you, Miss Kina, for watching. Yes, Miss Sadie. Auntie Sadie, sometimes I call her, says, I am enjoying this. Mama says, good information as always. Girl, it's informative, says Auntie Julia. She is going to be diagnosing all of her friends and families now. And let's see, uh, let's see, Miss Sheila says, yes, I enjoy this. Uh, Sora Irma says, the information was very helpful. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, we're going to wrap it up because I know y'all got to get back to work because you know. I got three kids. I can't pay y'all's bills if y'all become unemployed. Let's figure out the last thing. We talked about in process, uh, prognosis. I'm sorry. The last way that they are different is treatment. Okay. Anything in mental health, yes, therapy is the answer. Go get some therapy, right? But if you hang out with me, I do not talk about medications over here because I realize that people are afraid of medications. People are afraid of medication. Listen. While we are here, just go ahead and type in the chat for me what reason you may be afraid of mental health medications. We call them psychotropics. That's the fancy word. Just go ahead. What you've heard, what you believe yourself, what people in your family believe, just go ahead and tell me. Be honest. It's just us. It's just us. So you can go ahead and tell me. Go ahead and tell me because that will help me in the future. Cousin Tan says, I'm late, but I'll replay. Girl, it's been a good one today, honey. Anytime we still over here at 1243, we had a good one. Well, I got started late because you know sometimes life happens. Yes, Dr. Brandy, you are giving out good information information. Thank you so much. Tell me, y'all, what are some of the things that you have heard of that make people a little bit concerned about psychotropic or mental health medications? Making my children not themselves a zombie. Medication can be your best choice. Yes, side effects. Yes, yes, yes. Auntie Julia, if you can, tell me some more about those side effects because I want to one day, I'm going to get brave enough to address some of this with y'all, but I want to know what is it that people are concerned about so that I can best help y'all out. But while y'all are doing that, Treatment. Treatment is the last way that I want to talk about that is different between ADHD and bipolar disorder. The side effects. Miss Julia, tell me about the, um, you and uh, Miss Julia and Auntie Julia, y'all both tell me about the side effects that you're talking about. Leanne, tell me about the side effects, some specific ones that you may have heard of or just say, not sure, or just don't answer anymore. And I don't know, okay. But sometimes people have heard uh, good things or some other things that I want to know because I want to be able to help y'all. Because y'all know that I give y'all my Friday this hour because I'm trying to educate you. And hopefully, I'm doing that. And it is my honest to God prayer that somebody's life has been changed. Somebody's child's life has been changed. I'm not just over here because I want to be. Y'all know I got a whole lot of jobs and a whole lot of kids. I could be doing something else. But I'm here because I am invested in you. I'm invested in you. And I want things to be better for you if they are not the best that you want them to be. Very enjoyable. And a lot of things I didn't know. Now I think I'm bipolar. Oh, Lord Jesus. Stop it, girl. Uh, some people look like zombies after me. It says, Mama. Miss Sheila says, how do I get my husband to understand my kids' ADHD? Punishment is not always the answer. Oh, my God. Oh, Lord Jesus. Miss Sheila, bring him over here to focus on it Friday. Take him to Dr. Brandy B. Show him these videos and then like i said last week and like i always say be gentle and loving prayer be gentle loving prayer be gentle loving prayer that's how you get anybody to do anything that's how you get anybody to do anything the way that you approach people um it you know subtle hints so y'all see miss um julia skinner 
Buford is on here. And I told y'all that her coach is, her daughter is my coach, right? And so getting up and exercising in the morning is just hard for me. A lot of times I'm up late and um, I just don't have energy in the morning. But you know what? We, we, we work out 30 days in a row, then we take you know, seven or 10 days off. And then we start back. I've been doing this for a year. I have paid every single month because I'm committed to myself and I still feel connected to the group. So even if I don't make it for weeks at a time, those things are still ingrained in my head. And let me tell you what my coach did for me. And this is why y'all need to get with an accountability partner, a, a coach, a psychiatrist, a therapist, a pastor, a best friend, somebody coach just fell in my DM on Wednesday. And she said to me in my DM, um, and sometimes coaches on here, I don't see her on here, but she said, um, what, be honest, no judgment. How many days have you worked out in the last two days? And I said, if you count today and tomorrow two. that was Wednesday. So what did I do Wednesday? When I finished work Wednesday, I did it. I did my exercise. I copied my little tickle picture and I sent it to her. She said, yeah. So yesterday, what did she do? She said, you know what? I'm thinking for you these next 10 days when we're off, I think you ought to do some replays and not take a break. So when I get done with you all, I'm going to do that. But what did I do yesterday? I told y'all I saw 19 patients starting at 3 o'clock. I did not see my last patient until like 930 I took a break from 9.30 to 10. I started doing some other stuff. I started doing some other stuff. I started doing some other stuff. And in my mind, when it got to be 11 o'clock, I said, I told coach, if I did yesterday and today... I would have two days. So guess what I did at 11.15? I started working out. I got tired. I got tired. I took a picture of my watch. I sent it to her. And she said this morning when she woke up and got it, look at the timestamp. Because I told her before midnight, I will have done it. At 11.51, I think it was, is what the time that my clock said, I had finished my workout. So to go back to your point, how do you convince somebody? You cannot hound people. You got to just fall into their DM, fall into their ear, fall into their subconscious. Just whisper something and walk away. If she was always on me, Dr. Brandy B, I ain't see you today. Just a simple question. How many times have you worked out in the last seven days? Well, that really would have meant that day plus the six before. But because I'm smart, I say, well, if you count today and tomorrow too, right? So that's what we got to do. We got to approach people with love. We got to approach people with a gentleness, a gentle spirit, and a, an area of concern, not an area of badgering or hounding people, which is the way that I practice medicine. If you come to my office, I give you education. My patients will tell you what I give to you on Fridays is what they get every time. Now, sometimes if they start asking me too many questions, I'm like, hold up. Uh, 731, the benefits of treating ADHD. You can go over there and watch that. I've already talked about it. And then if you want to come back to me when you're ready, we can do that, right? Because I feel like that's the bit, I don't, I don't feel like pa parenting is hard enough, right? And a lot of parents feel guilt because something is wrong with my child and I did something wrong. And I've talked to y'all about this before. You don't have to do anything wrong. You can do everything right. Eat from the freshest of fruits and the most organic of foods and still your child can have ADHD. Because what, what do we know about ADHD? Those of you that have been following me, there's nothing to do with diet, nothing to do with diet. Okay. So hopefully that was helpful as a way to approach your, um, your husband, your spouse, your wife, or whomever it is. Stop thinking you're bipolar. Latina Kali. Uh, let's see. Jamira. Very informative. Thank you for sharing. Yes, girl. And welcome. Thank you for coming over here and hanging out with her. With us, Miss Coco Brown, all the way from California. Girl, what time is it in California? She says, hear the same things about the meds making the children like zombies. Zombie, zombie states. Yes. Suicidal thoughts, fatigue, loopy. Thank y'all for those examples. That's very helpful. Oh, my goodness. Y'all are the best fans a girl could ever watch for. Miss Irma says, you are doing a great job because it helps me better understand my students when other folks don't think something is wrong with certain children. Absolutely. And so uh, teachers are definitely one of the people, one of the groups of people that I love to love to love to educate because the truth of the matter is that the teacher is with my child more than I am, if the truth is told. So I really need the teachers to understand so that they can 
help the children. And I always talk about, if you go back and listen, I always talk about people don't want their kids labeled, right? But if I close my eyes and you say, I'm going to give you a banana, there's a certain way I'm going to expect to hold a banana. There's a certain way I'm going to expect to unwrap a banana. There's a certain way I'm going to expect the banana to fill in my mouth. So if you give me an apple, I'm like, um, I didn't know what to do with this. So we do need to label people right with some of these diagnoses because your teacher needs to know your child's teacher needs to know my child has some learning disorders and i know y'all don't want to even use that word oh child y'all give me all our tests let me get back over here to what i'm doing so i can get away from here leanne boy says worsening depression weight gain low energy well i can tell you right now that weight well in general yeah but not adhd meds uh let's see miss sheila mcdonald says this is exactly what i told him thank you love first prayer and i also pray with the kids it's good to know I, girl you are doing more than something right you are doing everything right by your being here today that lets me know that you are on the right track keep doing what you're doing keep doing what you're doing somebody just tell me sheila keep doing what you're doing keep it up tan says amen coca says we're two hours behind it's 10 50 okay so you've got all the day all the day miss irma says amen and we want you to keep doing what you're doing everybody on here keep doing what you're doing Last week, I talked about that. I went off on a tangent. Y'all know I get off on tangents. But I want y'all to know you're doing everything right. You're doing everything right. You're doing everything right. Everything that you need to parent the child that you were given, God gave it to you. And y'all know I talk about God over here. I'm sorry. If you don't talk about God, then there may be another Dr. Brandy that can help you. But that's what I do over here on my page. I talk about God. Because God is the center of my life. Now, I'm not going to force him on you, but I, when I talk, I just talk about things that are in my heart, and that's what's in my heart, okay? So, keep doing what you're doing. You have everything you need to parent the child that you were given. The biggest thing that you need to do is make sure that you're accepting of the child that you were given. You can't parent the child you were given if you're still hoping for another child, okay? I got three little individuals, and I learned quickly that I cannot make them all be or act the same because they're not. The quicker you can realize that, the better your life will be, the better that child's will be. Amen. Miss Sheila says, thank you. Y'all are so wonderful. Let's sum it up and get out of here. It is 1253. We are talking about, we have talked about, we have done all kind of things in love today. I want y'all to just stop right now, y'all, and just whisper a prayer for everybody on this call. Just right now, y'all, just whisper a prayer right now. Amen. Somebody on this call, they their, their name popped up on the screen, and I know that they need some prayer of encouragement, but I know that everybody on here needs some prayer of encouragement because every once in a while, I start this call out by saying, y'all, yesterday a parent got to me. Very rarely do I get upset, but this, this person last night got under my skin. But I had to keep it together because... My other parents and families don't, you know, they don't need to know about all of that. So I had to keep it together. But we need prayer, y'all. It's a lot going on in the country, y'all. It's a lot going on in the country. Matter of fact, I'm on a panel. Will y'all promise me that y'all meet will meet me at 4 o'clock Central Standard Time? Um, look, I'm going to post the Zoom at the end of this call, but I'm going to be on a panel. We're going to be talking about COVID-19. We're going to be talking about color, but we're going to be talking to y'all. I'm going to have them to bring up all these different um, mass murderers, y'all, that are going on in the country. Keep your kids away from the TV and watching all of that, but it's everywhere. Nowhere safe. The grocery store, the school, your job. I mean, it's, it's just a mess. Um, and so it's so much to be stressed out for, so much to, to take our attention and our focus away from what we need to be focusing on. But we all just need some prayer. So I, I want y'all to just, just pray for everybody that ever stops by Dr. Brandy B's page and pray for Dr. Brandy B. Y'all pray for me, pray for your pastor, whoever that is, because I, like I said, I now understand what it's like to be up leading people, teaching people, um, making sure that what you're telling people is, is adequate, is accurate. Um, but, but we need some strength. Pray for y'all teachers. Um, Tan Howard is a teacher. Sam Colston is a teacher. Irma Gore is a teacher. We have several other teachers that stopped by, um, 
one of my classmates stopped by last week. Just lift the teachers up, y'all. It's a lot going on in these classrooms. These kids, these teachers, y'all, they are not labeled as mental health providers, but you better believe that they are. So I applaud y'all for being over here trying to learn what you can learn because sometimes just a hug on those sweet babies in that classroom might be the only hug that they ever got in their life. And that is no lie. So we appreciate you all for doing what you're doing. She said three shootings last night in Tuscaloosa, the same here in Birmingham and whatever city you're in. Um, and uh, Tan Howard said, I need this. Yes, we need this. Yes. So I'm sorry. I, I ain't no preacher. I ain't no deaconess or whatever. Some of my mom friends call me deaconess, but you know, I, I, like I said, I just love the Lord. And if he gives me, he has given me a platform, right? Y'all are part of my platform. So I have to be responsible with that. And so I appreciate y'all being here. Yes, indeed. We're struggling. Dr. Vanessa is a teacher at the collegiate level. We're struggling at the collegiate level too. She says, stay prayed up for family and the world at large. Miss Irma says, yes, please pray for us. We are stressed out. Teachers need a vacation. Yes. So we definitely appreciate y'all. If I could give y'all a raise, I would. I definitely would. Um, but yeah, I love everybody on this call. And I really, 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 y'all could be doing anything, if nothing but just watching TV. And you're over here with me. So I really, really, really appreciate you all. All right, I'm going to wrap it up. We're going to summarize. And then we're going to get out of here 1257. Thank y'all again for being here. Uh, Miss Lolita Hampton says, thank you, teachers. And you know, people complain about the teachers, but they... Y'all know what it's like now because y'all was with them babies since this time last year. And some of them are still not going back to the school for whatever reason. So we just lift up the, the teachers and we just thank you all so much for what you do. Teachers, I've got something coming up for y'all. It was planned for June 5th and 6th. Miss saying I'm going I'm to call you for real though. Um, I'm going to have to move my date. But we're going to do something special for the teachers because y'all need to go back to school energized and ready. All right, energized and ready. So here we go. ADHD and bipolar disorder, we know how they're alike. Hyperactive, all over the place, can be moody, can be irritable, maybe not, we don't know. Time, ADHD is chronic, uh, bipolar is episodic. Somebody taking notes for me. Miss D, are you still here? Miss Kina, take some notes for me and then just put it all together. Write some notes for me on your paper and then put it in the chat for me when we get done, if you don't mind. Thank y'all so much. I love all of y'all. Y'all are just awesome 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 time oh miss erica erica green i know you'll take some notes for me too dr nicole thank you for coming back or hanging on y'all are just awesome so time adhd is chronic bipolar disorder is episodic all right two the presenting symptoms adhd is focus and behavior bipolar is mood if you are coming in late and you want to know what in the world are they talking about, go back and listen from the beginning. Yes, ma'am, Miss Irma, I'll make sure that you all know. I'm trying to work on something special for y'all, so yes, ma'am, I'll let you know. Um, the third thing is um, situation, changes with situation, ADHD can, bipolar disorder does not. If you don't know what we're talking about, go back and listen. The fourth thing is predictability. ADHD is inconsistently inconsistent. Bipolar disorder is predictable, predictable as far as what causes it and what it looks like when it started. The, um, I think we're on number four or five, prognosis, 50% of ADHD outgrow uh, bipolar disorder. I'm sorry, 50% will outgrow ADHD or at least manage it, live with it. Um, Bipolar disorder, again, is long-term debilitating, meaning you're in and out of the hospital, lifetime of illness. So think about this, parents, when you say, I think my child is bipolar. Think about what you're saying. You're saying, I am giving my child, we call uh, schizophrenia and bipolar, SMI, serious mental illness. And it is a reason that we call um, them serious mental illnesses. Not that the others aren't, but I just want you to think about that. When you, That's how we as mental health professionals classify them because they can, a lot of times when you see people homeless and just really in a bad way, serious mental illness is to blame. 
but do not be fooled. Serious mental illness is not what's causing people to shoot stuff up all the time. Okay. Some of that is just hatred and whatever else is going on. But we have to make certain that we protect our people who do have mental illness and not be so quick to blame bad decision making on mental illness. All right. And then the last thing, um, the way that they're different are treatment options, treatment. They, and I didn't go into it, but Therapy is good for both. Therapy is good for anything. But when you're talking about types of medications, you've got your stimulants for your ADHD. You also have some non-stimulants for ADHD. And then for bipolar disorder, you have mood stabilizers. Mood stabilizers. All right. That's all I have for you. Are there any questions today? I'm sorry. I kept y'all a solid hour today. Any questions? Any questions? Concerns? Comments? Miss Luella, thank you for joining us. I saw you were on here. I forgot to speak. How rude of me. I am so sorry. Y'all have just been amazing today. I really appreciate y'all's time. Y'all know I do. Y'all know I love you all so very much. You come hang out with me every week and I appreciate that. All right, guys, if there are no questions, please, please, please check me out Sunday. I'm going to be with um, some of my colleagues. I've got Dr. Jeff Moore of J.R. Moore & Associates. I've got Dr. Artie Nelson, who's a psychiatrist. I've got Dr. Gerilyn Agee, who's a professor and uh, one of the deans at Miles College. Um, we've got uh, uh, Dr. Oh, my God, her name is escaping me from Brown. Highly recommended over to us. And we have a college graduate from last year's um, class at South Alabama. We're all going to be on a panel. It's going to be hosted by one of my friends, Miss Deidre Diaz. Um, and it's going to be lovely. Sunday at 4 o'clock Central Standard Time on Zoom. We're going to be talking about how all these things going on in the world affect our mental health. Because don't be fooled. These things affect our mental health. Did you talk about if someone has both conditions? I did not miss Inger Shea. Cozy, thank you for joining. I did not, but about 30% of people who have um, ADHD can also have bipolar disorder. And you have to really, really, really pay attention. As a matter of fact, um, I just had a case like this, and it's a young child. A bipolar disorder, that's another thing, age. Um, go ahead and add that whoever's taking notes for me. Age is one of the differences. Usually people are at least late adolescence to adults before ever getting the diagnosis or really before ever really being able to meet the criteria. Whereas ADHD, because it is a developmental disorder, we can see it pretty young, sometimes as early as three years old. And yes, I'm treating a three-year-old, a three-year-old. And um, I've been treating her for a year and um, she's not quite four yet. So sometimes it happens. Um, but yes, you can have both, but what do you have to wait on, Miss Inger? You have to wait on that episode of bipolar to happen because remember your kid, your, your typical folks are here. ADHD hyperactivity is here. You've got to wait for mania to happen and you got to be paying very close attention to know this kid is hyperactive at baseline, but this is something else. This kid doesn't sleep at baseline, but this kid has been up for four days non-stop on the go painting the wall sweeping the sweeping the ceiling fan so but yes you can have both which do you treat first it gets tricky you tend to treat whatever you whatever presents first now i am an adhd specialist so i am gonna always be able to tease out adhd so i'm probably gonna treat adhd first um and then if it makes it worse sometimes the sometimes your antidepressants can that's too much information. You treat whatever presents first because you may not always recognize that a kid has or a person has mania because they are not in that episode. So you got to wait until they have the episode. So usually the ADHD, because it's consistent, you can see it all the time, no matter what phase you are and you can treat it. Praying for you, Sora. I work in higher education as well. Thank you so much, Miss Lolita Hampton, for doing what you do in higher education. We are lifting all of our educators out. And I'm going to throw myself in there, too. I always wanted to be a teacher till about 10th grade. Um, so thank you all for doing what you do. All right, guys. If there are, are there any other questions before we head out, enjoy this beautiful weekend. Y'all know I got to tell y'all. 
COVID is still real and people are still getting infected and people are still dying. Remember, I want you to get the vaccine, but I'm just going to approach you in love and I'm going to walk away and not hound you about it. I want you to know that the vaccines are still safe. I want you to understand that even with Johnson & Johnson, um, you know, people have been getting um, blood clots, okay? I still want you to understand that was six out of so, 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 many, 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 many people. All right, if you're smoking, stop smoking because that can give you a blood clot. If you're on contraceptive, be cautious because that can give you a blood clot, okay? So be very careful. If you sit on a job most of the day and you don't get up and walk around, you can get blood clots from that. These blood clots, they are in your brain. These six people that got those blood clots did have brain uh, clots. So I do want you to be aware that they are different, but I still want you to know that the vaccines are safe. I had mine in December and I have not grown any extra body parts or lost any. I do want you to know though with the vaccine guys that you can still give the illness to other people. So continue to wear your mask, especially if you're around people that cannot be or chose not to be vaccinated, okay? So small children and other people who made the choice to not, okay? Um, we have to respect that. We have to approach them with love and with education. But continue to wear your mask to protect yourself because you can still become infected. You are promised, though, with the vaccine to not get hospitalized and to not die. You are not promised to not get the infection and you're not promised to not give it to others. So encourage other people to wear it around you, their mask, wash your hands, stay your distance, and see me on Sunday at 4. All right, let's see. Got both. Woohoo! I love it. I have a question for you. Can I contact you on Messenger? Miss Tanisha Michelle, you can. Make sure you contact me on Dr. Brandy B. If you are my patient already, make sure you call the office where you see me. You already have a con direct connection to me. If you are my patient and you contact me in Messenger, I will not answer it. Because at that point, we're talking about your child. You have a way to contact me. We have nurses and other people that help me. And I want y'all to know I do not do this alone. There is no way in the world. I have the most amazing nurses and support staff ever. So lift them up too. I'm very easy to work with, I think. Um, but we, we rock and roll. We see a lot of kids. So thank you to everybody. But yes, Miss Tanisha, if anybody has a question, just hit me up in at Dr. Brandy B in my messenger at Dr. Brandy B. Don't don't find me, my personal page. Go to Dr. Brandy B. All right. Let me get out of here, y'all. I love y'all and I hope to see all of you Sunday at four. Check the Dr. Brandy B page. Uh, for the flyer, it's green. It's with my organization, the Links. We're a service organization. I saw my president on here. Um Cecilia a minute ago. But anyway, I'm going to get out of here. Um, I love y'all. And I, I'm not a patient. Yes, ma'am. That's fine. Miss Tanisha. Yeah, I knew that. That's fine. So you can just inbox me. All right. See y'all um, next week. Bye. Oh, I got to go with my outro. I'm Dr. Brandy B. Your triple boarded uh, child not lesson psychiatrist. Y'all see my boards? Look at that. Look at that. I've got my adult psych, my child psych, and my pediatric boy right there, y'all. I decided to show y'all all my paper. So y'all know I'm not just making this stuff up. I am really triple boarded. And I love, 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 love educating folks so that everybody can be successful in the classroom and in life. Follow me at Dr. Brandy B. Tell all your friends about me. If you invite five friends to just follow my page today, that lets me know you love me and that you appreciate all that I'm doing over here for y'all. And otherwise, I will see y'all next week. Love y'all. Bye.